Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video which I will explain a bit more about the difference between home NAS and home server and why you want to choose one, why you want to choose other and what's the basically difference. And after this video you're going to be a little bit surprised that sometimes the way that people say about NAS or home server it's um, a little bit ambiguous and this reason that I would like to explain a little bit more about it. So. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed, and let's understand a little bit more about it. I decided to record this video because one of my colleagues came from me and said, Alan, can you give some advice how I can assemble my NAS storage? And then I asked, NAS storage, why you want to choose my, your NAS storage? And he said, Alan, I want to make sure that all my system, all my data, it's only one place and I can access everywhere in my network. So he's right, this is the definition of a NAS storage. Uh, and if you guys come here my screen, you can see in the Wikipedia what's the definition of NAS. Network attached storage, what it's basically a computer that only connects to network and you can have uh, all your data control in only one place. But what's the problem for this initial conception? This NAS, only thing that it would do is uh, have all your data in only one place and you can access it. And that's it. Nothing else. And nowadays those NAS is not anymore so much usable because you can have a more powerful system and they still call, let's say, NAS but it's kind of a server. So if you come here, one example, it's uh, this knowledge NAS. This knowledge NAS, they say that's a NAS and uh, it's a network attached storage, but you can have a quite good CPU, you can have a dual core and you can have eight gigabytes of run, which allowed you to run a lot of applications. So if I come here in my knowledge NAS, here I have um, a lot of application that is running. I can have my Apple backup, I can have my storage drive, I can have my AMB server, I can have my photo management, storage management, a lot of containers. So in this case I have 21 containers and if I open here all those containers is running healthy. And in the same time if I open here my description I have only 34% of my CPU running all those 21 containers. If you think about it I can run more 21 containers, depending what kind of containers, and I still able to run my system smoothly without any problem. So then you think this is a NAS and what is a server? In the past, or at least everyone that I talk, when they say about server, they think about this. This is a server which you have one or two CPUs, you have a lot of RAM memory, you have lots of fun two or three power supplies, lots of capacity, raw capacity allowed that you can have it. The same thing for one example for this, you can have 16, 17 hard drives running parallel with SAS, you can have a dual CPU with 10, 12 cores and this one work, yes work, but the efficiency is not so great. If you think nowadays you can have quite really powerful efficient with a, a small size. Let's give an example. This is my screen. It's an Intel Xenon E5 2650V3. Exactly the same one that was showing this page with the Dell R630. And if you lo look, one CPU is around 11,000 in the CPU mark. But um, it's good. I don't know if it's good because you have 1,000 or 11,000, you have 105 watts of power. If you have two CPUs of those, you can have around 20,000 and you're going to have 200 watts of consumption. And in the same time, if you look for a CPU, you can get a if 3 14 10 0, 0, and you have 15,000. And with 3, it's the start point for the Intel CPUs. You cannot get, let's say, smaller than it and you still have more power or more raw power than the Intel CPU that it's uh, dedicated only for a server, which allowed you to run a less powerful system with more power or more raw capacity. 
Okay, one of the things that you're gonna see, yes, the amount of run memory. You can have mass of uh, 128 gigabytes of uh, run, but most of the application will not need more than it. You're not gonna get a bottleneck with only 128 gigabytes. So if you think my Synology have only eight gigabytes of run, why need you have more cores or more raw power if you want to run some applications? In some cases, you need to have more cores or a more power system. And this way come your Ryzen. You can have a Ryzen 9 7900X with 107 watts, okay, it's a little bit more power hungry, but you have at least five times more power than that Intel. So you can have, let's say, five CPUs and will have exactly the same power as only one of those. So what is better? I do believe that depends on the application, but unless you really need an enterprise system, for your home system, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to get a really powerful or remember, if you decide to go for a computer and you want to assemble it, you're gonna have a little bit more power consumption compared for if you buy, let's say, a NAS that is not, in my opinion, a NAS because you still be able to run most of the application. You can do everything that you do in a server. You can have uh, virtual machines, you can have a uh, lots of local containers, you can have a uh, lots of application running. So in the past, when you say NAS, yes, the NAS was only NAS. But at the moment, it's really difficult to say what is a really NAS and what is a home server. Because in my point of view, let's say this one, they say that's a NAS. But in my point, it's not a NAS because you still have a four cores, you still have a eight gigabytes of RAM memory, and you can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM memory. And you can still run your system smoothly, and you can still have a lot, a lot of application and will run the same way that you're gonna have if you have a, one of those Dells. Or you're gonna run pretty much anything if you have a computer with uh, some hard drives connected. Only thing that I will say is yes, ECC memory could be a little bit better for avoid error, but if you do backup, if you do checks on your data, the chance to have an error will be really, really low. So I don't think that is worth that uh, extra hassle to set up a system that will be old hardware. You can have problems anytime because it's old hardware. You're gonna have more power consumption. You can have more expensive components if you want to replace, because if your run memory burn, you need to buy exactly the same run memory. What will cost more? And you're gonna have a lot of limitations compared for your computer that you're gonna do principally for a home user. If you have enterprise with lots of money and you don't care about this small amount more extra or to pay two or three times more, yes, go for a server, but get a new one. Not get an old one and say, I'll get this unupdated only to make, let's say, a server. You can get a computer assembled the way that you want and it will be same power or even more powerful with a low power consumption that you can put one corner of your house compared for this old computers that is really power hungry, really noisy, and not as efficient as you would expect. So what advice for my colleague? Get a computer, get an old computer in eBay, and make your server, or get a NAS, a Synology NAS, or a CleanUp, or other things that's all built in one, and run it, you're not gonna regret, gonna work really well, and don't invest to get an old hardware only because you want to have, let's say, a proper server. That's uh, the definition of server and definition of NAS, as I told. It's a little bit confused nowadays. Everything that do more than one application could be, say, as a server, and only a network attached could be a NAS. What it's difficult to find compared that uh, all the system is more powerful than before. So in this way, we arrive at the end of this video. I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time. Bye.